It's Jordan Mulligan from the Mulligan Brothers, and today's interview highlight is with Liam Harrison talking about fully committing to your goals. At 18 years old, he moves to Thailand from the UK. Today's video is sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com, where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts, Hardest Work in the Room t-shirts, and also the brand new journal has just dropped, the Not A Journal. Go check it out. Before that, let's jump into the highlights. It was after my... 29th, well, my 30th fight. I went 29 fights unbeaten, and my 30th fight, I fought a Thai champion. And um, he was like elite level, top, top level. I never fought anyone that good. I'd fought a few Thais before who were good fighters, and I'd stopped them, but I'd never fought one of the best of the best. I fought good Europeans, and I'd stopped them as well, but like the elite level guys, this was my first time at that level. I was 18, I'd been to Thailand once myself, I'd not, not fought there, I just stayed there for three weeks just to do a bit of the, the training and stuff. And in round two, I knocked this guy down with the left hook and I just thought, oh, he's just the same as every other fighter, I'll finish him off now and that's that. I went in to finish him off, he survived the round and then he got up and in round three, four and five, he destroyed me. And I mean, he just wiped the floor with me. I remember when I dropped him with the left hook, his eyes rolled into his head and then he came back up and he started smiling at me and he didn't have a gum shield in and he had blood all over his teeth. And I thought, this guy's crazy. And he just, he absolutely destroyed me, battered me. And I remember after the fight, I was thinking, right, if I want to fight these guys, I need to be able to know how they fight as well as how I fight. And if I can mix both the styles together, then I'm going to be just as dangerous or if not more dangerous than the, the, these guys are. So. I just said I, I was seeing a girl for the time as well. I've been seeing her for three years. I just went on, went, I'm sorry, it's over. I'm off to live in Thailand. And that was it. I just, she was devastated. And I said to my mum, I said, Mum, muff. That's it. And just went two years. That fight were on the 29th of November. And then I went on the 15th of December before Christmas. So everyone were mad at me for ruining Christmas. But I said, this, I said, I can't have this in my head over Christmas because my head is going to go. I need to like go out there and just make sure that and see if I can live at that level. I don't want to be like the nearly guy. I said I want to get that level and I want to be the one that is getting in the ring knowing I'm going to win at that level. I don't want to be fighting these guys thinking, oh, am I good enough or not? I want to get in there and know. So I just went out to Thailand and I, I learned to fight their, their way and I probably had about 15 fights there over the space of two years. Um, so I was fighting really regular and I had some of the best, best experience in my life and some of the worst. But that's how it's got to be. Um, the getting out of your comfort zone is massively important. And again, that, that comes down to the same thing as obsession. I've, I think you can't just be comfortable in what you're doing. You need to be out of your comfort zone. Like in training, you need to be in six or to eight weeks out of your comfort zone. Otherwise, when you fight, it's going to be healthier. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just, I wanted to be like, I said before, I don't want to be like a, a big fish in a small pond. I wanted to go over there and I went to a gym called Jitty Gym and it had a lot of Thai champions in at the time and top level guys. So I wanted to, to live like they did. I wanted to train how they did. And um, for the first like three, four weeks until I got used to it, it was it were hell. I was living on a mattress on the floor, just like the Thais did. And I'd, I said to them, just treat me how you, how you treat anyone else. And they did, I, they had me fighting every three, four weeks, um, which I loved. Um, but yeah, it, it was it got tough at some points because I was out there fighting for money as well. I was only 18 when I went. I'd not had too much money saved up. Um, I just went out there and I was fighting for money. At one point, I was like, I'd be running low on money. If my body's a bit banged up and I'm injured, it didn't matter. I had to fight. You either fight or go home. So that's what I did. I, I just used to fight as, as often as I could, as regular as I could. I worked on the things I want as good as like clinch work. Like the ties are masters of it and. The Westerners are okay, but they're not as good as the Thais. I clinched every day with like Thai champions. Um, I mean, sure, again, like there were a Thai trainer there called Rajasak. Training finished at 6 p.m. every night. It was three in the afternoon till 6 p.m. I were always there at 6.45, still doing bits of extra work with him, um, trying to bring myself up because these guys over in Thailand, they've all been doing it since six years old. It's second nature to them. So I'm trying to catch them up. So if I've got, that means staying late when everyone else is eating dinner, that's what I'm willing to do. Well, to be honest, in Thailand, I didn't have a choice. They just, just don't make me do it. Um, because what happens is as well, don't forget, like there's a big gambling culture in Thailand. So if I had a big fight out there, they were probably going to get some money gambled on it. They were going to be betting. So if they thought I want in as top shape as possible, then they wouldn't whip me into shape. And I mean, like they'd have me up at six running and I'd be the last one out of the gym at 6 p.m. at night and they'd make sure that I were on point. Well, I didn't help myself because I was like, well, what we're doing as well is I was betting on myself when I used to fight. Like I said, I was there for money. 
And I said, right, I'm going to do a bet on myself. So if I didn't win, I had no money. So I had to win. <laughs> I had to win. But one time I bet on myself and the whole gym bet on me and I lost. And um, I'd bet all my rent money on myself and everything and I lost the fight. And then three days later, I was I banged up badly. And he said, look, you ain't got no money. What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to fight again. So three days later, I got flown down to Phuket, one of the islands, and I had to fight again for my rent money. Um, and I, I won that fight by knockout in round three because the fighters in Phuket, luckily enough, for me, they're not as strong as the Bangkok guys. The Bangkok guys are the elite of the elite. That's why Muay Thai is the, is the capital in Bangkok. Um, luckily, I went down to Phuket. I still got a decent wage and I paid my rent for two months then. But yeah, to fight three days after having a really hard fight, I lost on points. And to go down there and have to do it again three days later was not nice. My fears at the time were thinking I wasn't as good as I thought I was. So that's why I wanted to go put myself right. I had to face my fears. I had to go to Thailand and, and train with these guys and fight them in Thailand because I thought maybe I'm not as good as I think. I thought there's only one way to find out. And go over there and then I just have to fight with them every time. I have to train with them every day. And by doing that, that brought me up to the next level. And um, I was lucky really, like the experiences I had out there, not a lot of fighters these days, they'll get them because there's a lot more exposure for Thai boxers and fighters now. They're, they're getting, signed by big organisations like One Championship and other fight organisations earlier. So they're missing out on all these experiences that I had, like where I was fighting every three, four weeks or every three days or whatever. They missed out on this and this is it. It's life experience as well. Like I've got a lot of like crazy stories that other fighters aren't going to have. Um, and I wouldn't change any of it for the world. So yeah, to, I went out there and I faced my fears, but look where it's got me now. It was like the, the end goal of all that was always more important than any fear that I ever felt. I was in the gym once, I'd, what I did was, I'd flown home, I'd been there for six months, I'd flown home just to see my mum and dad for two weeks, and then flown back to Thailand. So within the two weeks, I'd obviously been on piss with my friends and that, I'd not been training in England, I was having a rest. I got back to Thailand, that first day of training, there were a promoter walking around the gym, and Jitty went, oh, I want you to go fight pro boxing in Cambodia. I said, I've never fought pro boxing. He said, oh, it's all right, just go do it. And I jokingly said, yeah, all right, whatever. And then he came back in the next day and I thought I wasn't going to hear anything about it again. And he started taking photos of me. I said, Jay, what's this guy doing? And he said, you're fighting pro boxing. I said, I don't want to fight. I said, I've never fought pro boxing. He said, you punch hard, you'll be okay. I said, Jay, I'm not doing it. He said, it's double the money you get for Thai boxing. I went, all right, we'll do it. I said, all right, just this time, one time. So I had to go to Cambodia and I said, okay, to my Thai coach. I said, when, when, what day are we coming? He went, oh, I can't go. I said, what do you mean you can't go? He said, they want to make it look like we've, they've flown you in from England, so you've got to go with another Western person. So I had to go with just one of the other fighters who were training there. We we're no coach or anything. My friend Adam, who we went with, and he didn't really know anything about boxing or anything. He didn't know anything about Thai boxing. He would do a jujitsu guy, to be fair. So I went, all right, no worries. So I said, who am I fighting? The guy, my Thai trainer said, don't worry, he's rubbish. You'll knock him out. I said, what weight? I said, 65 kilo, I think he told me. And at the time, I were only fighting at 62 kilo. So it were a bit heavy, so I went, all right, no problem. Um, I only had like a week to prepare for the fight, so I wasn't fit either. And then when we flown into Cambodia, they flown me in on a propeller plane. And I was thinking, how do these guys think I've flown on a propeller plane all the way from England if they're trying to make it look like I've come from England? So I turned up and there's all these newspapers. When the plane landed in all these newspapers and TV and everything, and I'm thinking, I thought this guy's crap. I thought, if he can't be that crap, of all the TV are here waiting for me. And then I sat in back of this bus and some guy gave me a newspaper. And he opened it up and he had my opponent on the middle page of the newspaper, a big spread, Cambodian number one boxing champion. And I thought, oh my God, I thought I'd been stitched up so bad here. So we went to check the weight. I jumped on the scales and I was 67 and now I told the fighter at 65. So I started putting the, the sweatsuit on and the promoter went, what are you doing? I went, lose two kilo. He went, no, gain two kilo. He said, you're underweight. I said, what do you mean I'm underweight? He said, fight 65. He said, no, 69. I thought, oh my God, I thought I was fighting at 62 at the time. I thought I'm going to get absolutely destroyed here. Um, came down to it on the day of the fight and we came out and I'd not really been doing much boxing training. What my Thai coach said to me, he said, you're not fit, so train like you're still fighting Thai boxing and kick the pads and knee because it's harder than just boxing. And I don't know where this logic came from, but I went, all right, whatever. And I got absolutely punched all over for the first round and a half. I brought my nose in the first round and I just had no idea what I was going to do. It was a six-round fight. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? And in round two, I dropped him. 
with a left hook and he was out starfished and I was running around the ring, jumping on the ropes, celebrating and stuff like that. And it must have been about 20 seconds that I was running around for and I turned around and the ref was still counting going five, six, like that slow. And I think, what's going on here? And eventually on eight, he picked him up off the floor and stood him up and then went fight. So I ran back in again, I dropped him again, and then this time his nose was bleeding, so the ref picked him back up again, didn't give him a count, took him over to his corner, gave him a drink of water, wiped his nose, and then sent him back out again, and then the bell went. And I'm going, oh my God, I thought, I'm, there's not a chance I'm gonna win this fight here. I dropped him again in round four, and then dropped him again in round six, and the ref just picked him up off the floor every time and wouldn't stop the fight. So I dropped him like four times altogether. So luckily, there were no way they could have like give it against me on points because I'd had four, 10, eight rounds and I won on points. And I just thought, I am never ever going back there to fight again. And then the next week when I got back to Bangkok, they said, oh, we want you to go back. We've got another fight for your boxing. And Jitter went, oh, they're going to pay you double. I went, don't care, they're not going. I said, you're not sending me to do that ever again. You stitched me right up. And there it is, that's Liam Harrison committing to his goal. He didn't want to be a nearly guy. At 18 years old, with a girlfriend, at Christmas from the UK, he moves to Thailand to commit fully to his Mu Muay Thai career. And for a lot of people, it's a thing that we don't do. We don't fully commit to goals. And when we don't fully commit to goals, you are completely setting yourself up for a failure. If you want to be one of the best in the world at something, there can't be anything else that gets in the way. Um, so I love this story by Liam. He has some amazing other stories. Keep your eyes peeled for some of those highlights. Guys, today's video is sponsored by MulliganBrothers.com where you can now buy the Mulligan Brothers, not a journal, buy the Mulligan Brothers, the official journal. And it's basically about getting shit done. And that's literally a list on one side is where you put your tasks, cross it off to get shit done, notes down the other side, week, month, and yearly goal to affirm each time when you write that down each day that it's the goals that you want. And then it's just got a date, which is dateless. So you can buy one of these in the middle of the year and you don't need to buy a new one in 2023. Um, thank you for everybody who's been buying them. It's been amazing. And everybody who's supporting our journey, thank you so much. We will continue to make content to inspire change and fly around the world to find the freshest motivation for you guys. As always, have a blessed and productive day. Go follow me on Instagram, at Jordan Mulligan River if you wanna see some of my workouts. I lifted recently 180 kilo stone, which is a PR for me. And you can see sort of my day-to-day -day routine, what I get up to in fitness, all that kind of stuff. Working out with some of these athletes that we work with, which is fantastic as well. Yeah, go follow me on Instagram. Anyway, guys, have a blessed and productive day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.